and welcome. We've been talking through our forces unit that applies for physics classes and also as a foundation for AP physics classes as well. And this is a follow-up to Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. What I'm going to teach you today is a really important skill that's bigger than just Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. It's a way of thinking, a strategy for solving conceptual problems without given numbers. Let me give you an example of the questions we're going to be asking today. So what would happen near the force due to gravity between the Sun and Jupiter if the mass of the Sun was doubled, the distance between them was tripled, or the mass of the Sun was doubled and the distance between them was tripled at the same time. So I'm going to talk you through strategies for how to solve problems like this, how to think through and solve problems like this. And you will see questions like this on the AP exam as well. These will filter in usually as multiple choice questions, but you might even get them as a letter on an FRQ. And so this is a really crucial skill to be able to understand how to solve problems like this. Let's get to it. All right, so here are our strategies. As usual, I've tried to put them into five straightforward steps that you can follow. All right, and the first thing we're going to say for these types of relative comparison problems are going to be to ignore any units. And the reason why is we want to get relative meaning. We're not going to actually look for absolute answers here. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a moment. That's actually easier to explain with an example than with words. And next, we're going to ignore any constants. And that's because I'm going to pick two examples to work with. I'm going to create two examples to work with. And any constant that is in each equation doesn't really matter because you can divide it out. In other words, if I had one equation on the left and another equation on the right, and I multiply both equations by 3, and I wanted to compare the results of both of those equations, you could actually divide that 3 out. It's irrelevant. That 3 becomes irrelevant if you're going to compare two relative examples. And again, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Next up, we're going to assume easy numbers. I like to use 10. I would highly suggest to use something like 10, but if you want to use something like 1 instead, that's fine. And that's going to make it easy to come up with our answers as we work through these problems. Fourth, remember to include any exponents or square roots. You cannot ignore these power rules, and you have to include them in your calculations. And fifth, compare the two examples you have written in terms of a ratio. The numerator is the first thing mentioned, and the denominator is the second thing mentioned. Again, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean, and this will make more sense as we work through an example. So this is our overall equation up here. And let's go back to our original question. What would happen to the force due to gravity between the Sun and Jupiter if the mass of the Sun was doubled? So let's work through our strategies. We can write our original equation. We can ignore this constant right here. This g is going to drop out because I'm going to compare my a example with my b example in just a minute. I'm going to use 10 for all of these terms. You could say, wait a second, the mass of Jupiter is not the same as the mass of the Sun. And I would completely agree. Not only that, we're not using units. What is going on here? And the answer is we're going to assume very easy numbers because we're looking for proportional changes. We're looking for relational changes. We're not looking for absolute numbers. We get an answer using this example problem right here of 1. That is actually meaningless by itself. So what are we doing here? Well, we're going to make a relative comparison. And that's where we're going to have meaning. So we write the equation again. Think about what we need and what we don't need. We don't need this g value. And we're going to change this. So what if the mass of the sun was doubled? Well, I'm going to double what the original value was. It was originally 10. Doubling that makes it 20. I do my ratio. I do my simple math over here. I come up with an answer of 2. 2 by itself is meaningless, but 2 compared to 1 is actually what we're getting at. We can say that if we're going to do a ratio of the second example in comparison to the first, that would be a 2 to 1 ratio meaning that the force is going to be twice as great if the mass of the sun is doubled compared to the original situation we were given. If the problem is rewritten in the opposite way, then you could say the original force is one half as great as the second scenario force. And so this is my conclusion over here. The force of the mass was doubled. The second force in reference to the first would be twice as great, meaning the B example compared to the A example is going to be twice as great as before. All right, let's try another problem. What would happen to the force due to gravity between the Sun and Jupiter if the distance between them was tripled? All right, so I want you to start thinking about what this would look like. The beginning of the problem looks exactly the same as we have set up before. Now, though, what am I going to do differently? Or I could say, 
instead of some 10, what am I going to write? And which 10 am I going to change? Hopefully you're able to come up with the idea that we're talking about the distance here. Distance is in the denominator, and it's going to be three times as great. I did mention before, and I want to stress, that we cannot ignore these power rules. These exponents we have to leave in, and so 30 squared is 900, and you end up with a relative value of 1 ninth. So that means if we compare the second example with respect to the first, we write what we had for our relative value for the second example over what we had for the first example, and that translates to 1 ninth. What does that mean? Well, that means the force due to gravity between the sun, if you were somehow able to move them so they were three times as far apart as they were before, the attractive force between them of gravity would be 1 ninth as great. Or if the question was turned around, you could say how much greater is this force, this original force, compared to if it was moved to be three times farther away? Well, it would be nine times greater in the original sense, in the A sense, compared to the B sense. So to put it into words, I would say the force, if the distance was tripled, the second force in reference to the first would be one ninth as great. So let's combine these concepts into a more complex problem. Now, I ran out of room up here, so at this point you understand what the preamble to the question is. So essentially, what's going to happen to the force if the mass of the sun was doubled and the distance between them was tripled at the same time? So my A example in all of these cases is going to be exactly the same. It's like a baseline value, and that's why I'm saying use 10 for all of these because it's going to make your math a lot easier, and I still end up with this answer here. Now I want you to think to yourself, how would you write the second equation down below, the second example down below? All right, so the mass of one of the objects is doubled. That means one of the 10s has to be turned into a 20 and the distance between them is tripled, so that denominator 10 needs to be turned into a 30 for an answer of 2 ninths. So what does that mean? That means our second example with respect to the first example is going to be 2 ninths as great. So it's going to be a lot weaker than what it was before. Or you could say how much greater is the first example compared to the second? We would set it up as a fraction this way. How much greater is the first example in comparison to the second? Well, that would be a relative 1 value over 2 ninths, and that would simplify to 9 over 2. And in words over here, I would write if the mass is doubled and the distance tripled, the second force in reference to the first would be 2 ninths as great. Now, I want to stress, we're talking about this in the context of Newton's universal law of gravitation, but this is a skill that I want you to become comfortable with and you can use in multiple scenarios in physics and they will use in AP Physics as well, you will see higher level problems use this kind of thing from time to time because it encourages higher level thinking. In any case, I'm going to be doing more screencasts in this forces unit and other units as well. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments down below, let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.